Is this real life? Yeah, this is real life. Judge Gray. Well, thank you. I guess I am the uh, final presenter uh, formally on here, and I want to commend you, first of all, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Hagman, for inquiring in this. I want to commend you for your leadership in bringing up this really important topic. And I'm also going to commend you for staying within schedule. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment in itself. Uh, I would, now that I guess I am the last presenter, like to comment quickly about a few other things that have been discussed, and then I would like to talk to you about children but that issue really has not been addressed particularly, except maybe by Reverend Richardson. The first is that if this state of California were to in fact make this marijuana no longer illegal for adults, that is not at all the same thing as condoning it. We don't condone the smoking of cigarettes or the sm using of alcohol, etc. so to put that label on it I think is inappropriate. Number two, as I have an understanding that today, as we speak here in Sacramento, that there are thousands of people in prisons in the state of California today for doing nothing but smoking marijuana. Thousands in prison for doing nothing but smoking marijuana. Why? Because they're on parole for one reason or another. And once they get off parole for whatever that offense was, if they smoke marijuana, they are, it's a violation of parole, and they're immediately put back into state prison with all of the benefits that uh, they had accrued, getting jobs, etc., supporting their families, being lost. Another one is that the tougher we get with regard to marijuana prosecution, literally, from my experience as a judge, and I have seen this on, in Orange County forever, the softer we get with the prosecution of everything else. And that is something that we simply have so many resources, and if we're spending them in prosecutions of marijuana, we are not spending them for prosecutions of rape, homicide, etc. Then, marijuana will never put this violence that we heard earlier out of business. All of these statistics that you heard earlier about the violence and the killings of both the police officers and everyone else is occurring under today's system of marijuana prohibition, etc. The only way you put these Mexican cartels out of business and these other violent creatures out of business is to undercut the price, to make it no longer illegal so that you don't have that enormous profit motive to get these people involved with that violence, etc. The only way you do it is to undercut the price, and Assembly Bill 390 is a really good place to start. Otherwise, uh, there are marijuana today that is stronger in our society without a doubt. But the reason why it's out there and stronger is because of marijuana prohibition that there are lots of people who would much prefer, like you said, not to use the stronger stuff, but the cardinal rule of prohibition is always push the stronger stuff. So if I'm a bootlegger and I run into the same criminal justice problems for selling a barrel of beer as a barrel of bourbon, guess which one I'm going to push? The bourbon because I make more money. It's the same thing with marijuana. Nothing is going to be legalized in this state. It is a program of the strictly regulated distribution. It wouldn't be legalized. It's a strictly regulated distribution, just like alcohol and, and uh, cigarettes. We hopefully will not advertise them. Please put into your legislation not to allow this to be advertised. We want to de-glamorize it, not glamorize it. So no advertising and hold people accountable for their actions. I know I'm going on, but I'd like to talk about children for, for a couple of minutes, because today our marijuana laws are putting our children in harm's way. We are continuing with this failed program for all of its defects, so-called, because we want to reduce the exposure of a lifestyle of marijuana usage and marijuana selling to our children, and it's doing the opposite. Today, it is easier for our young people to get marijuana than it is alcohol. And if you don't want to listen to me, ask any teenagers you can find. They will tell you that because of alcohol prohibition, excuse me, drug pro or marijuana prohibition. And Reverend Richardson kind of stole one of my lines because it's true because the illegal dealers do not ask for ID. So let's make it less available for children by regulating and controlling it. Number two, adult drug dealers will recruit children to sell drugs. They will recruit them to their, into their own drug distribution system for $50 in cash. You can buy all of the 15, 16 year olds in the inner city or anywhere else that you want to. It's chump change for the adult drug dealer. It's lots of money for a kid. 
So you use them as gophers and lookouts and couriers, and as soon as their reliability is established, then they're trusted to sell small amounts of drugs out in the communities. And who do they sell to if they're out there doing it? I assure you, no one in this room, they're going to sell to their 14, 15, 16-year-old peers. That is despicable, and it's caused by drug prohibition. So I say, let's reverse that, let's turn it around, let's regulate it, let's control it, because this prohibition is not working. I believe it fervently. I'm so concerned about our children. I'm so concerned about these illegal marijuana out there with all of its ramifications. I want to reduce those harms by passing your legislation, and I commend you again for these hearings.